85 million jobs uh, in the coming years. Okay. So uh, he was talking about empowering entrepreneurship and uh, micro entrepreneurship. Uh, my question is, how can we empower entrepreneurship? What are the challenges facing entrepreneurs and VCs to, uh, ma to match with entrepreneurs? And uh, from where I see it, we're inspired. We're, uh, our people here in Jordan, we're very inspired. We're inspired enough. We don't need inspiration. We don't need, we need role models. We need something technical. So can you elaborate on that, please? What's the technical that we need? Well, it uh, depends on the field you're talking about. Or how it's Look, and I, uh, I started doing this in 1988 in Jordan. Today, the environment is much, much, much better than what it was in 88. Um, now, I think over the last three, four years, there has been more movement to put money for venture capital, specifically what they call angel, angel funding, uh, available. You have Oasis 500. You have at Jamail uh, Al-Miyya, you have something called the, the uh, Capital Network, Riyadh Capital Network. Um, there is now uh, venture capital being made available at Jetco uh, or Jordan Enterprise. I think it's $15 million. Uh, so that's getting better. The technical stuff that you're talking about, if you go to Oasis 500 or if you go to, to iPark or if you go to something called the Business Development Center, they have now training programs on entrepreneurship. They have something called um, Mprotec. They have courses on uh, finance for non-finance people. They have all of these. I mean, they have these things. Um, I would say that the biggest, the biggest challenge is not, is not uh, any technical. It's believing in yourself that you can actually make a success. Yani, I know one of the problems that we have is we always want to end up doing something بالحكومة or something بزين or something عندي or into you can create your own future. But you have to be convinced that you have a good idea. You have to have a good idea and you have to be able to, uh, to follow people to get them to invest in you. This mindset uh, first starts here with, with you and with the youth and with entrepreneurs. It also will carry over to uh, business people. And uh, we always say that there isn't money for venture capital. I'm finding out more and more that people, Fadi Bandur, Nazan Darwaze, other people, uh, uh, anyway, many of these people are now investing in youth and investing in new, in new people. So if you have an idea, uh, my suggestion would be, depending on the type of idea, you can go to uh, Oasis 500, you can go to iPark, you, there are consultants that can help you. Uh, there are consultants that can help you hook up with these people to go, to go talk to them for investment, for mentoring, for, for many of these things. I don't know if I answered you. I have just another question, please. Uh, I work for the government for the Jordan Investment Board. Uh -huh. uh, from your point of view as uh, and people, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, VCs, what incentives can the government offer to create a better uh, environment for entrepreneurship? Sure, and I don't think it's incentives. I think government is, uh, the way government deals with businesses is very poor. The cost of, of dealing with government is very, very, businesses get. The cost of, of dealing with government is so high that many cases were still non-competitive with places that have lower cost of doing business. If you go to Singapore, if you go to Malaysia, if you go to Dubai. So, yeah, our individual companies are more, uh, are more efficient maybe, but the government isn't. From the point of view, uh, these things are really, really, really very costly. So I don't think it's necessarily incentive. If, if we can just get the government to be more efficient, I think this would be a huge benefit for all companies. Incentives in specific? And I was talking with, um, with people from, from, gen, uh, from uh, planning. You know, if you, if, if a new, uh, a new category of fund was to be created, 
where you could take something called an investment tax credit. Uh, if I was a public, uh, public sec a publicly traded bank and I have to pay the government 15 million JDs, if a special vehicle is created, investment vehicle, where I can take a million of what I would pay in tax and put it in this fund, and it would count as tax, yeah. And that fund would invest in small and medium enterprises. I think this would be a very good way to mobilize funds for, for entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises. You're welcome. Okay, was there a question here? Uh, to welcome you gentlemen. And uh, I have one question related uh, actually the Jordanian uh, people here. Uh, do you have uh, any vacancies that you were not able to fill it with Jordanian qualified people? Special uh, uh, positions, you were not able to find really qualified people in these positions? Thank you. Really speaking, almost all of the businesses that I've been involved with have hired only Jordanians. There are a few special companies that I'm involved with. A company called Rubicon where we've had to import people with very, very, very specific technical skills that we have not been able to find in Jordan. And, it, and it's not I mean, technical, not in the sense, you know, it's uh, engineering technical, it's uh, how to draw in 2D, experience in animation. We've had to bring people from the Philippines to work in that, to train Jordanians. But that has happened about three years ago and more and more Jordanians can fill that. But it's, it, it's not I any mean, mishiktir. Um, you will find that the, where the competition is between foreigners and Jordanians is not for the high skill levels, it's for the low skill levels. يعني المزارعين بالغور مصريين أو من بنغلاديش أو من باكستان مش أردنيين. الموظفين اللي بيشتغلوا أو بلاش العمال اللي بيشتغلوا بمصانع المصانع اللي بيسميها رخيصة بس المنتج تبعهم رخيص لأنه تكاليف الإنتاج هالقد بتهمهم بفضلوا واحد مصري على واحد أردني لأنه الأردني أول شيء بيجي عنده باتشلرز ديجري والمصري جاي عنده تكنيكال ديجري الباتشلرز بده 300 دينار المصري بيشتغل ب 150 ف our businesses many of our businesses are Try, are creating jobs for the wrong people. They're creating them in the yeah, the 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 agenda of mission. And just to highlight on this, uh, yes, there are jobs that we cannot find Jordanians to do it. But it's not because the Jordanians are not qualified, but because they don't want to do it. They are uh, uh, they're not willing to do it. And that tells you that when you go to labor ministry, you'll find 600,000 registered laborers working in Jordan. Okay, and we have a, a, an over 20% unemployment rate. Uh, while uh, what I wonder is why, when we go to the U.S. Uh, or when we migrate to Canada, we don't mind serving coffee at the coffee shop, and we don't mind working at the fuel station, and we don't mind driving a taxi. But we mind it here in Jordan. So yes, there are jobs where we cannot find Jordanians to do it because Jordanians are not willing to do it. And not because Jordanians are not qualified. I'm a Jordanian, I'm proud being a Jordanian, and I believe Jordan has been a, a, a resources mine, uh, a human resources mine for the whole region. And I have seen successful Jordanians in every single country I have been to. We are capable, but we need to learn how we can start from the scratch. Okay. I, I still remember myself going home from the uh, workshop, uh, although I come from a middle class family, I never needed to do that, but I used to go to the workshop and I used to be happy going back home with a dirty clothes, dirty hand, and I used to feel uh, the beauty of life when I get a small salary at the end of the month, okay, for doing something and working hard to do it. I have, I want to tell you a story of a friend of mine. He is actually living in India. Uh, he graduated as an engineer in India. 
And then he's a Palestinian, so he went to Palestine. He was trying to find a job, he could not find the job. So he said, okay, let me try in Amman. So he traveled again to Amman, and he was trying to find a job in Amman as an engineer. He could not find a job in Amman as an engineer. Why? Because we don't believe with engineers graduated from India, while Indians are, are, are actually so qualified. So what happened is, while he was looking for a job, he overpassed uh, 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 a place where they do the solar energy heaters, the solar heaters that we have on the rooftops of our houses. And he liked the idea, and he realized that in India, they don't have this. So actually, he worked as an assistant to one of those people, and he, he, and he trained them how to make it. And then he traveled to India on a visa. And he started making it at his own shop, small shop. And he ended up uh, with an Indian citizenship. He got an Indian passport. He is on the solar energy uh, 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 committee for South India. He owns a university in India. Uh, and now he owns an international school, American international school in, in the UAE. And his partner is one of the sheikhs over there. And he's, uh, he's doing very well. And now, last time I spoke to him, he's trying to do the other school. And he owns a college in South India, in Bangalore. Uh, and he did all this because he managed to start from scratch. He managed to learn or to go to a place and work in a, in a workshop and uh, get himself familiar of how, how, how do we manufacture this. Okay. And now he's satisfied. He's okay. Uh, he, uh, I think he, he can retire peacefully. So, uh, at an early stage. <laughs> no, he's a bit older. Doctor. So, th this is what we need to be very frank with you. Talking, and I promised you to talk heart to heart. And yes, this is what we notice sometimes in Jordan. We need, we need that humbleness. Yes, uh, j just one, one quick uh, point. The jobs for non Jordanians, I think all of us know that the agricultural sector and the construction sector. You know, these, these two sectors are held solely by the Egypt, Egyptian, Bengali, and other nationalities. The uh, non-Jordanian workers in these two sectors, about 370,000, much higher than the number of the unemployed people in Jordan. Only in these two sectors. Jordanians don't want to do this. As for the question, what are the vacancies available, as I mentioned, in my company and in the banking sector in general, we do need badly financial analysts. We do need uh, badly loan officers. HR managers are much wanted than any other field as well. So this category of middle management, not uh, CEOs, we still need in the banking system a lot of them. And, and the last thing and I want to say, and I promise you will not talk after that. <laughs> Once I got a call from my mother, I was, I think, in, uh, I don't know, in Kuwait maybe. She said, listen, your brother is delivering a Wasit newspaper. I said, hey, how come my brother is delivering a Wasit newspaper? It doesn't work. So I called him, I said, why are you delivering a Wasit newspaper? I can send you one. Uh, he said, no, Ahmed, it doesn't take me anything. I just do it on... Saturdays and Sundays, and it cost me nothing, and I make uh, 150 JDs or 90 JDs or whatever. So I said, yeah, it makes sense. I was working in a workshop when I was small, and he's delivering a Wasit newspaper, so what, what's wrong in that? So I said, okay, do it. And then I got another call, he said, listen, now he's delivering pizza. <laughs> I said, the first time he convinced me, so I cannot talk to him the second time. Okay. And that, that actually turned him into uh, a, a person with a strong personality, uh, capable to deal with the society around him, uh, uh, able to achieve faster than others. Uh, and the good thing is that he's sitting here now. He's trying to learn from his brother. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a question here, yeah. right first. Then. I want to plan for our individual development. And uh, listening to the success stories of your good self and Mr. Uh, Lake, it sounded more of grabbing opportunities and enjoying and having passion towards whatever we're doing. 
Um, so is it really a myth, the planning thing, or have you done planning? Doesn't sound like <laughs> uh, you've done anything. I when I started, and I thought I would get into a company, and I would work very hard, and I would go up the company until I became general manager or president or whatever. Um, I found out that what I was doing, th that's why I said at the beginning, know, know yourself. When things started getting boring for me, if I'm not learning constantly, it's very difficult uh, for me to go do a good job. I always need a challenge. And that's, that's me. Other people don't have this. So I did have a plan when I started, but I learned very quickly that I had to change the plan. And, and the point of what I was trying to say at the beginning, by demonstrating that I worked in engineering and, and aviation and banking and venture capital and, and that, is don't be afraid to change. Yani you, can, you, you think, in you know, I'd like to have a, a career in marketing, and you will find after two years, you know, it's not that. Don't stick to it because you'll be very, you'll be very bad at what you do, and you'll be miserable. And for you to be good at, yeah, for you to be excellent, you have to find something you like. And here's the best example. Yeah, and he, he said, "I found joy in, in everything that I did." If you don't find it, yeah, and he, see, I mean, it's horrible. And the most miserable times I had was when and you, you wake up in the morning and you say, I have to go to work. It shouldn't be like that. Anna, particularly in the Jordan Technology Group, the, I used to spend 16 hours at work because I loved it. I was coming home at 11 in the evening. I was coming home at 1 in the morning. Yani it, but I was, it was fantastic. Uh, that's that's what I think you should look. I do think we're transitioning away from the classic towards something new. And I'm seeing lots of. Uh, I have one of uh, somebody that I worked with, uh, Majid Qasim. He did, he established a company called D1G, the Google on the internet. Uh, but if you look at his business card. The title of the AGA and the title of the CEO and the chairman The CEO and the title of the AGA And I'm looking at this, these are people who really enjoy what they do يعني, They have the freedom to go out with the Basha or the Afendi This is very very nice ف, This type of new creative energy is coming into our businesses um, and it's it's it's, fun, it's phenomenal. It's wonderful. You had a question there. Yeah. I know paradox of the labor market. Uh, there's so many factors uh, uh, is affecting the labor market. As Dr. Jaffe said, that there is a skills mismatch, and this is uh, totally uh, uh, um, totally agree with this uh, with this factor, which is so important because most graduates. Uh, um, uh, graduated from university with high degree and employers need something else. So there is a skills mismatch. Another thing is that there is a geographical mismatch. Most most jobs are created in Amman and people are in the remote area. The third thing is the reluctance of Jordanian people to, to join the technical and the construction and the agriculture uh, sector. Why? Because they think they have a, a bad image that these these sectors for the lawyer uh, for the law achievers. So if we change this image, uh, most Jordanian will work in these sectors. If they and we if we change this image and uh, we so support that we, uh, we that these sectors are good and because Jordania needs job security. This is an important thing. All all our uh, all Jordanian are seek for job security for decent job for a decent environment. So when I ask to, uh, so many Jordanians, they like to, to work in gas station and uh, in these uh, jobs. They, they do, I mean, they like to, to go there. But if we I mean, change the, the stereotype and uh, the mindset of the people, this is what I want to say. I agree. And, uh, totally. and, uh, there's a mismatch. 
But there are two ways to deal with the mismatch. You can either, uh, this is very important to what we were saying earlier. You can take a lot of people and retrain them to work in areas where there are jobs. And I think there's going to be a huge business opportunity to retrain people, okay? But also, you're assuming that al-sharikat uh, are right, والناس اللي غلط. It could be الناس صح والشركات غلط. Or maybe الشركات need to also modify to be able to use the, the, the labor that we have. And the best example of the, يعني أعطيكم مثال في بالأردن في ستة وثمانين ألف مهندس بنقاط المهندسين. Okay. ثمان تلاف واحد منهم بيشتغلوا بالهندسة. ستة وسبعين ألف مهندس بيشتغلوا خارج مجال الهندسة. ف we need more engineering companies or we need or these people need to retrain. You need to ask. How, with all of these engineers, why don't we have more companies that can use their skill sets? And the, the, the reason is, you know, establishing a company that does technical skills, or that needs these technical skills, is very, very expensive. And most people don't want to do that. And that's why in Naktir Mohansil, Bibi'a Mobilat, Bisugu Takasi, Fathain Falafel, do all of this. Because this is what they can do. So the degree is, I mean, the government needs to do something to to help people establish companies that need the high skill sets that we have. Okay, okay. question from the back. My name is my degree in horticulture hmm? uh, from the Jordanian University in 2006. I have been working for my father for five years and uh, I just stopped. And I took an MBA from here in marketing and now I'm doing marketing, so um, I've changed my career and I'm doing something new. I'm not miserable anymore. Oh, very good. Um, but I have a comment about this agricultural sector. It's, uh, I just totally agree with you that it's just about the culture. People don't want to be humble. But still, the government should do something. Um, my father has been exporting to Holland since 1995 and it was a successful business but this year it was a disaster for the agricultural sector because simply we just need cheap labor even the egyptians that mr light is talking about they are not working for us anymore they are not taking 150 jds so i i hope that someone from the new government from the ministry of labor will uh, give the opportunity for the cheap labor to come back that to this sector the solution i love yeah now we need to change we need to change. We cannot expect the government to change it for us. I, let me let me yeah. tell Anna I did sorry, Anna I did engineering. Okay. Well, I wish agriculture. Then I would have something, yani I can build on something that we have. If I want to do it. But it we uh, and yani, so cool. Yeah, I'm thinking about Zamaq, can't I think? Once, uh, Dr. Jack, said in one of the lectures in the first semester here that it's not easy at all to change the core values. So I think that people are changing, things are becoming yes. better. But for the people to work in agriculture and in workshops, it will take time. It's not that easy. Thank you. Well, thank you, Hazem. I think the unemployment and this a chronic mismatch is not an economic phenomenon. It's more of cultural, social. Uh, social. So we need to change the culture. But one final point from my side, based on the comment you uh, you made, has an, and the other comment made by the gentleman who quit the job. It's a simple advice for everybody. Please do not resign if you don't have a job. Be patient. Stay in your place. Try to love your job, okay? Try to, as much as you can, apply some, somewhere else. Seek a, a better job while on the job. Because uh, for the employers, they do not really like to receive an application from somebody who has left his job nine, one year, uh, nine, 12 months ago, and nobody has hired him. 
So stay in your job. Try to do as much as you can. Be patient as much as you can. Look around while you're sitting in your job. So many people start to get frustrated and that will affect them negatively. Even in the job interviews, we can read it easily. So it's very negative to apply for a job while you're unemployed for unknown reasons. Just final advice from my side. <laughs> and, uh, thank you for the sharing with us uh, these inspirational and challenging stories with us. Uh, what I want, to, uh, I want to ask Mr. Ahmed Hamdi about uh, your story. You just told us that uh, you have started uh, many times from the scratch, either in Pakistan, Sri Lanka, or Kuwait. What I wanted to ask, uh, we have started three lessons from uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Muhammad and Mr. Leif and from you. Three lessons, uh, the communication skills, the attitude, and the joy, and the uh, networking. What I want to ask you, how could you, how could you maintain your attitude when you, when you began in uh, these many times from the scratch point. Since uh, uh, we are in a really challenging point, we are in really challenging and harsh time, time, so we want some tips, some hints, to maintain our attitude, to boost us, and to be optimistic in this uh, challenging time. Thank you. And I'll be yeah, very frank and honest. Uh, I did change my attitude sometime in the past. When I was in finance, I used to be so aggressive, shout most of the time, uh, and uh, yeah, I I, uh, I used to take lots of Benadols, uh, smoke double what I smoke right now. Uh, but then uh, I, I realized at the point of time, yes, I have to uh, to change my act, uh, and then I I actually created my own values and ethics and uh, I know Russia will hate me for that because she hit this so many times but uh, uh, I put three main pillars in my life and that is trust, uh, respect and transparency. Uh, those three things uh, got me to be in peace with myself and peace with, yeah exactly, that's a good thing about me. Uh, got me to be uh, 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 in peace with myself, in peace with the surroundings around me, and uh, 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 got me to gain, again, if I give you respect, you give me respect, right? And if I give you trust, you, 99% of the people will give me trust back. Uh, and if we deal on 100% transparent uh, uh, way, then I go and sleep peacefully at night. I don't have to think that, well, I lied at you, or I hide something at you, or I told you something and I meant something else. And uh, certainly I can tell you, I believe, uh, I love Gandhi, uh, a leader, uh, a leader uh, uh, without suit and tie, uh, a leader who has, uh, he, we did not have a bank account actually, uh, he owns no lands or buildings, uh, and he led one billion people. He did not have to go for war, he did not have to fight. He managed to stop the one billion people of getting killed, actually. And what he said is, happiness and peace is when what you do and what you think uh, and what you say are all in harmony. And for me, I managed to maintain my attitude, keeping them all in harmony. What, what you see outside is inside and vice versa. Let's uh, thank you to our panelists. Mm -hmm. uh,